Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy and Hillary, a talk show with heart. We have an incredible lineup for you today featuring guests who will inspire, educate, and empower you. I can't wait to get to our guests because they are so incredible. But first, I found out that it's Mental Wellness Month. Did you know that? You know what? You can never talk about it enough. And the fact that they're highlighting it is absolutely important. But I went ahead and I wanted to understand the definition of mental health. And the Mental Health World Health Organization defines it as a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own abilities. And you can cope with normal stresses of life and you can work productively and is also able to make an actual contribution to his or her community. Wow, so that's when you feel whole and are, are really strong in mental health. So thank you so much for sharing that because I know that a lot of us need help in that area. And also the term gets thrown around a lot. It really does. Now let's learn about our incredible guests. First up, we meet Dr. Jeff Gardere, better known as America's psychologist. He is one of the most widely sought after experts in the field of mental health. Dr. Jeff is an author, runs a private practice in Manhattan, and Dr. Jeff was the host of VH1's Dad Camp and recently was the psychologist on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. He is here to give us tips on being more mindful during Mental Health Wellness Month and how we can create a positive mindset around New Year's resolutions. Next, we have best-selling fiction author Kate Quinn. You may know her from her thriller, Black Widows. She is here to discuss her gripping new novel, The Clinic. Kate will also share her personal journey with addiction and recovery, shedding light on the challenges and triumphs that come with overcoming addiction. And lastly, Hillary and I are gonna talk about our books. My book, Chaos to Clarity, Seeing the Signs and Breaking the Cycles, and relaunch, spark your heart to ignite your life. And we're gonna get into the details, the behind the scenes of why we actually decided to write these books and what came from the experience. Get ready for an enlightening and empowering episode of Wake Up With Marcy and Hillary. Stay tuned as we dive deep into these important topics and learn from our incredible guests. So let's start the show. Let's start it up. Now we welcome Dr. Jeff Gardere to the show, better known as America's Psychologist. Dr. Jeff was the host of VH1's Dad Camp and recently was psychologist on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Welcome to the show, Dr. Gardier. Uh, thank you for having me, Hillary. Marcy, how are you? Oh, We're great. So happy to have you here. I know, so great to see you again. And thank you for coming on to speak about such an important subject. It's Mental Health Wellness Month. And, you know, that's interesting to me. I mean, I know mental health has to do with wellness, but how does mental health really affect our wellness? Well, when we're looking at mental wellness, what we're talking about is really being proactive and taking care of our mental well being before issues arise. And when they do arise, it's really important that as much as possible that we marshal our forces, our experiences from the past, be able to reach out to other people and try to tackle it, take it head on, instead of trying to file it away somewhere where it just gets more, whatever the problem is, becomes more and more difficult for us. So it's really keying, um, you know, looking at uh, what our resources are, uh, and taking care of our issues before mental wellness turns into mental illness. Mm. So everyone's talking about mindfulness these days. And in, yeah. your, in your opinion, what exactly is mindfulness and how can we leverage it? Well, there are a lot of different definitions about mindfulness, but I would think the most um, succinct uh, way we can look at it is an ability to be fully present in whatever situation we are experiencing. You all know this, we all live this, we're always worrying about what happened in the past or we're concerned or anxious about what may happen tomorrow and we're not 
present. We're not mindful. So when we do meditation, for example, um, or we do breath work, we look at how we can actually look at um, and experience our five senses without and without making any value judgments, just being in the moment, experiencing that moment. And when it's just about day-to-day life, it's just ex- experiencing it, being in it, living in it, whether good, bad, or ugly, but just being there and dealing with it instead of escaping to the past or trying to think about what may happen to with tomorrow. Let's just enjoy or deal with what's happening right in front of us, what we're sitting in today. Right. I love that about being present. Um, one of the don't things... Don't race. Don't race through it. Yeah. But, you know, it's like we... We talk about the past so much, and I know that it's shaped us, and we're dealing with it, and that's what you were talking about, you know, about trauma or things that are affecting us, and we try to push them down, right? We try not to yeah. face them. And then another thing we're always doing is a worrying about the future. Like, we, we have these ideas, these terrible things that are that are going to play out, and, and, I, and I'd ask, do they ever play out as bad as we, we determine in our heads yeah. that they're going to? They don't. So one of the things that you brought up is breath work. And Hillary, I know you love the breath work. And you and I have talked about that. Uh, can you share with us about breath work? And also, shift? how do we shift our, our mindset and really stay mm-hmm. more present and mindful? Because that's that's not easy. There's tools. There's different ways that, that we have to incorporate yeah. these things into our lives to make that happen. That's right. So the breath work doesn't necessarily have to be an exercise that we're doing. The breath work really is about calming ourselves down, not getting ahead of ourselves, as I think you referenced. It's really about being able to breathe in through our nose because that slows us down right? Not through, we don't breathe in through our mouth where we're hyperventilating, but our nose uh, controls that breathing. And then we breathe out deeply through our diaphragm out of our mouth. So allows us to calm down. When we calm down, it allows us to now begin to experience uh, with a little bit more accuracy what it is that we're feeling and what it is that's going on and exactly what you're saying that all of these uh, ideas of gloom and doom that we have and all of these terrible things are going to happen in the future well we begin to see that it is our mind that is racing and that when we begin to slow things down with that breath work then it allows us to be a little bit more uh centered in reality and actually be more in the moment instead of escaping into fantasy and and all of these terrible thoughts that aren't even part of reality. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I already feel better. Yeah. I, as you were talking, I was taking my deep breath. So thank you. Thank you thank for you. setting thank our you, minds Austin. right. Thank you, yeah. Hillary. Thank you. Bye. Next, we meet author Kate Quinn and learn how writing her book, The Clinic, was inspired by her own journey in rehab. Plus, Hillary and I will speak about our books. We'll dive deep and share some personal stories. Joining us now is Kate Quinn, a best-selling author whose books are published in over 15 countries. Her thrillers include Black Widows, which was praised by the New York Times, and the forthcoming The Clinic, a thriller set in a remote rehab clinic on the Pacific Northwest Coast. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, Kate. We are so excited and want to hear more about the experience writing the clinic and how it actually inspired. It was inspired by, I believe, your journey in rehab and the people that you met there. Right. That that book was actually inspired by a very dark time in my life because it was 
inspired by my own addiction to alcohol, my own journey and recovery, my own entry into rehab, rehab which was an incredibly scary time, very incredibly low time. Um, and you know, I went into rehab expecting to meet a lot of scary addicts, and I think the scariest people I met in rehab were the people running the clinic. <laughs> and I think that was oh, part of my inspiration for the book. Um, but it was certainly a journey. Yeah. So you you were just speaking about it that you were a bit older when you entered rehab, and that was forty one. Um, that was right around the time I stopped drinking. How did that impact your thinking process and perspective on life? That's a great question. And, you know, actually, Marcy, I, I read your book, Chaos to Clarity, um, last year, and I found it very inspirational. And I, there were a lot of resonances for, for me. Um, you know, I had two kids when I went into rehab. There was an awful lot of guilt and shame attached to um, mm that part of the process, the fact that I had kids, um, all, all that kind of stuff was going on for me. Um, as an older person, you know, I, I think when you go into rehab or when you give up an addiction, you, you've you normally used that addiction to mask feelings for your whole life. So when you take that addiction away, whatever age you are, you're kind of like the age you are when you started the addiction in, in many ways, because you've never, in some ways you've grown older, but in other ways, you've never had to go through those emotional maturity journeys because you've managed to dull it all and turn it all off with, with whatever it is you're using. Mm, so wow, that, yeah. so well said. And, and thank you for reading my yeah. book. That means so much, oh my God. <laughs> I, you know, I have it here, I, I have it on my, I literally have it on my desk because I, oh I love this God. book. It's very well done, so as you touched. can see. Um, Thank you so I had much. another little peek there. Well, it's, it's inspirational, really. Now, you also, as you're talking about this, that you revert back to that age, you also speak about your new family and how they help you reconsider your attitude towards failure, recovery, and resistance. Tell us, who do you mean by your new family? Okay, so it's, it's, it's so hard to talk about these without not getting quite emotional because when I went into that first... Um, group therapy situation I was absolutely terrified I mean I was really scared um and I uh well first I just cried I mean I literally just cried for that entire yeah but I listened to everyone else in the group and the, the format of that situation um is similar to the um to an AA meeting that people would sort of say what their addiction is um you know, admit they had a, a problem in whatever way is comfortable to them. In my case, it would be saying I, I'm an alcoholic. Um, and then maybe talk about some issues they had that day that they would like to process during the group. And what was seemed really obvious to me watching those people was that really good, that, that's really the sense I had. You know, they were there to try and, they were very empathetic people. They were very caring people. Um, and I really quickly, got the sense that the kind of people who are susceptible to addiction are often very empathetic, open people. And what they do is they give too much of themselves and then they need the addiction to turn it off at the end of the day because they just can't bear feeling these feelings anymore. Um, and that was what I was seeing when I was in the group with my, I would call them, you know, my, my family now of people who helped me recover. And after a while, I don't know how long it was, but it felt like I was able to see they were like a mirror, that maybe I was a good person too. And maybe mm -hmm. I had those same qualities that was causing me to, to use substances to, to turn them off. Um, yeah. But we certainly came a close bond and, and that was what I would call the family of, of addiction recovery. Can you share with us about really what inspired you to write the clinic and what it's about? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously I had all these experiences in rehab. A lot of them were about personal growth and um, discovering the roots of trauma and that kind of thing. Um, but then there was also like another side to rehab, which I'm sure people can appreciate, which is, you know, the sheer terror of going into this strange place with people you don't know and you're putting yourself in the hands of strangers and as an author I had previously written books I write crime books and in that being physically in that situation obviously um 
it felt very clear to me that this could be an excellent um, environment in which to, to stage a psychological thriller. Um, and then there was just, you know, a lot of crazy stuff happens in rehab. It's kind of a crazy place. And it's not really the kind of thing I would generally talk about, not least because I would feel protective of my fellow um, addicts. So to be able to put it into fiction and fictionalize some of those experiences um, really felt like something that I that I would love to do. And, and I really enjoyed, it's, it's maybe a strange word to use when you're writing crime thrillers, but I, I did really enjoy um, writing that setting and, and having fun with, with characters. Well, it's actually giving us a lot of insight because you have been through it yourself that a normal fiction book would not have. So I, I'm very excited to get the book and read Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So when, is the, when does the clinic come out? Um, well, do you know what? I just got literally today, I just unboxed. I have the book right here. So this is oh. the hardback. Um, book. I know I'm really excited. I always get massive boxes of them and it's good. Um, so, but it comes out on January 23rd. Uh, oh, congratulations. So that is a great way to start the year. Exactly. A you know. I can't wait to read it. I, it's definitely, we, we were going to talk about new books in the new year and the clinic is on my list. That will definitely Thank be Thank you one. so yeah. much. I've been so excited for me to read it. Thank you so much for coming on the show and for all of the crime books that you've written and the entertainment and, and just the pouring out of your soul uh, to, to entertain the audience. Thank you. I think it the takes audience. a fellow addict to appreciate that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you are pouring your soul uh, out when you're writing the book. So thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Okay, good Bye -bye. luck with the new book. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Up next, Hillary and I will speak about our books. We'll dive deep and share some personal stories. So I am so excited that we are going to actually talk about our books. I am beyond excited to share more about yours. I know. I'm going to ask you some questions. I hope you're ready for this because <laughs> Chaos to Clarity was written through your personal life. Almost, mm -hmm. I consider it a memoir. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when I read it, tears were flowing down my face. Mm. I, I knew a little bit about you. But this, you opened up the vault and you just said, yeah. I am willing to share. How hard was it for you to do that? It was really difficult to open up and put the stories down on paper and relive them, really. I felt the same. Yeah. <laughs> just reading them, I was like, oh, yeah. heart-wrenching. But it really did help me in my healing process. And I felt so guided to write my book and be open, raw, and authentic so I could really touch the reader and let them know that they're not alone. Had you been thinking about writing this book all along in your life or were you like one no. day, you said, what, what it really was that moment yeah. where you're like, I've yeah. got to do this. I've yeah. got, got to put down all of this inside of me. So. If you don't know, I put down the drink eight years ago, October 4th, 2017 to be exact. And as I was going through my healing journey, I started to get to know myself, start believing in myself and start loving myself. And I became very spiritually connected and I started breaking a lot of bad habits and cycles in my life. And I was being guided to write the book. People started saying, when are you gonna write about your story? When are you gonna write your book? Things would pop up around me that inspired me to start thinking about it. Because honestly, I never thought about writing a book. I never, it was honestly just so overwhelming that even the thought of it, but. The thought of going back and having to It wasn't that, just those the memories. idea of even writing a book, oh, right? It was so, the actual process oh of writing God, the book. the process of writing a book, but 
I just knew that I was learning so much. I was changing so much. My life was becoming so magical and beautiful. And I wanted to put that down so I could touch others so they could know that they could live a beautiful life also and how to do it. Now, as you're looking back on the book, yeah. how has it shaped and impacted you? Well, there is nothing that is more rewarding than seeing and hearing about the people that I've helped. That, at the end of the day, is why I do any of the work that I do, because it's about helping people. And when I know and hear the stories that this has touched someone, it's made a difference in their life or in someone's life that's close to them, that is where the overwhelmment of of happiness comes from and knowing that that I did the right thing by doing the hard work and getting this down on paper. It, and it's hard, but so worth it. So it opens up the conversation. It opens up the yeah. conversation. But what I ended up doing was relaunching. <laughs> so I'm going to segue to you now. All right. I want to ask you relaunch. This is an incredible book. Spark your heart to ignite your life. Okay, I want you guys to take a look at this. I love the cover. Why did you write your book? I knew there was a book inside of me. Mm -hmm. And what I originally thought I would do is write about all of the corruptness of the Silicon Valley and when mm -hmm. I was going through high tech. And then it was really interesting. My mom got really sick mm -hmm. and the women in my family all lived into their hundreds and my identity was I'm going to live until, you know, I'm a hundred. Hey, I'm yeah. not even halfway through. Right. And all of a sudden my mom at 77 got diagnosed with colon cancer stage four and it really touched something deep inside of me that said, you know what? these things we all deal with. Everyone mm -hmm. is going through something and we don't yeah. know what other people are going through, Absolutely. right? We put up that, that, that wall and building the wall takes time, but taking it down takes equally that much, right? Mm -hmm. And in relaunch, I started to look at all of the different relaunches that I had gone through, that my clients as a coach had gone through. Mm -hmm. And I started to think, wow, is there actually a process that you can go through a large transition and actually have a transformation. Yeah. And I realized that I had crafted a, really an, an idea around IQ and EQ. IQ, the, you know, you're, how intelligent are you that was in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and then EQ was the emotional, how emotionally you know, yeah. savvy are you? And in today's world, it felt very isolated, mm. the different buckets. And I thought, you know, it's really about three HQ, the headquarters yeah. of yourself. You've got your head, your heart, yeah. and then this highest self. Sharing how you can listen and believe in yourself. And what, what are the readers, what do you hope that they get from this? Uh, so you just said something so important. We are constantly hearing things. Mm -hmm but we don't listen. Mm, so true. And we don't listen to our own voice, yeah. our own intuition. And when you can quiet yourself, I call it the pause principle. When you can just be still, we, mm. talk, we talk a lot about mindfulness. When you can just hear ultimately what's being told to you, guiding you, yeah. that there is your own internal magic. You don't have to look on the exterior. It's all inside. They talk I, about, you know, don't just absolutely. exercise inner size yeah like what are you doing to increase that because uh, you know people are always about the external and going for what are we looking for it must be out there yeah but it's not it's in here spark your heart to ignite your life is yeah. really about let's let's become invisible mm -hmm. so we can be visible well thank you so much for sharing thank about you. relaunch i mean it's pretty special that we have this opportunity to have this show together Agreed. and also talk about our books. And these two books can really make life changing uh, possibilities yeah. in the new year. It really so. does. And allows you to be vulnerable, allows you to really open up to what's really going on with your life. And it's okay to share. And in fact, there's a big comfort that comes when you get it off your shoulders and you get it out there because there's somebody that needs to hear it as well. Absolutely, so get out there, believe in yourself, 
heal, move from chaos mm. to clarity, and then relaunch. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, a great show. I loved that we were able to get personal. Uh, you know what, those that's authenticity. When yeah. you can share what we shared and we're willing to say, hey, how maybe could this help you? Yeah, that's what and we really wanna be doing. Exactly, and just about mental health and the importance of it and understanding mindfulness. To, to find out more about today's guests, please go to wakeupwithmarcyandhillary.com. Stay in touch with us during the week because we put up some great content. Yeah, follow us on our social. Exactly. Please follow. It's good. And you're going to get a lot of inspiration there. So remember to be kind to yourself and kind to others. And we can't wait to see you next weekend. And don't forget, wake up to all of your possibilities this week. See you next time.